Welcome back again uh, to another uh, edition of uh, Behavioral Talks uh, with me. So we are um, going to continue with behavioral terminology um, because behavioral terminology is so common yet everybody misunderstands it because it shares that, that uh, element of commonness with everyday speech. So let's recap a little bit about what we talked about last week. Okay, so last week we talked about a behavior and in um, applied behavior analysis, a behavior is literally anything that you do, whether it's um, going for a walk, brushing your teeth, reading a book to learning a skill. It's anything that we do. Behaviors can also include the things that are um, talked about in everyday um, language. Right, which is oh, when we talk about behaviors, a lot of people oh, it's crying, it's screaming, it's hitting, it's running away, it's all of these kind of behaviors. Behavior in ABA also includes those. And the other two terms that we talked about were reinforcement and punishment. Okay, and in the field that resulted in a behavior occurring more frequently. Punishment is when an event occurs that causes a behavior to go down or to go away. And reinforcement is an event that has occurred that resulted in a behavior occurring more often. So when we're talking about these terms of reinforcement and punishment, we're really talking about the results of what actually happened. Did the behavior go up? Did it go down? Did it go away? If it went up, the event that occurred is reinforcement. If the behavior decreased or went away completely, then the process that unfolded was punishment. Next term we talked about was the functions of behaviors. Okay, And what we learned was um, that the function of a behavior really means the purpose of a behavior. Well, why do we do what we do? Okay? And in ABA, Every behavior serves some sort of purpose. There's a goal for the behavior, okay? And remember, the goal of any behavior is its function. There are four commonly identified functions of behavior. It's attention, escape, access to tangibles, and sensory stimulation. We all do things for attention, from the way that we dress to the way that we act to the things that we do a lot of things we do are to garner somebody's attention. Escape is another function. And escape means getting out or not doing things that we don't want to do. So if we get invited to a party and we don't want to go to that party, it's the behaviors you engage in to get out of the party. Okay, And that is the function of that behavior, whether it's making socially acceptable excuses for why you can't make it, or um, uh, doing things that get you out of being able to attend that function. Another function of behavior is called access to tangibles, okay? And access to tangibles just means that I want something specific, okay? There's something that I really want and I'm going to engage in these behaviors to get the thing that I want. Sensory stimulation is um, another function of behaviors and sensory stimulation basically is the sensations that we get from all of our senses, from our eyes to our touch to our taste. And the reason why we engage in any particular activity or, or behavior is because we enjoy the sensations that those things give us. Let's take a look at uh, each one of these uh, much more uh, uh, up close and so that you get a better better understanding of it because a lot of our the things that we do are driven by the functions of behavior. So we want to make sure that everyone's really understanding well, what is a function of behavior and how does it actually work. So let's take a look at attention first then. When we're talking about attention, okay, let's look at like cooking. Okay, okay, let's say that you're cooking for somebody. All right, and when you cook for them and they eat the food, they're like, oh my God, this is the best food ever. Hey, let me, I gotta call my friend out. Hey, hey, oh my God, this is the best meal I've ever had. Oh yeah, oh, I can't wait to come back again. Let's eat this thing again, okay? It's the attention that we get from whatever it is that we did 
And if that's why we did the cooking in the first place to get that attention, that function got met. So I'm more likely in the future to do it again. You have a, a get together, okay? And however, everybody's deciding to play a game that you just don't want to play, whether you're embarrassed because of the game, whether well, for whatever reason, you just hate the game and you don't want to play it. So you're like, oh no, you know what? I got to go cook. Uh, I'm cooking. I don't have time for the game, okay? If they let you off the hook and they let you go and cook and you don't have to participate in the game, guess what? Every time that there's a party, you're gonna, what are you going to do? When they play that game, you're going to go, you're going to go cook. Why would you cook for access? Well, maybe it's a competition. Maybe they want to know, oh, who cooks the best chili? And the person that cooks the best chili is the one that wins this nice prize along with this cash prize. And it's something that they're, that you can get. So that would be if I'm cooking because I want to get something and I get it, okay, getting it fulfills that function, okay, when it is about access to something. Looking for sensory stimulation just means you enjoy the smells. You enjoy the process of cooking. You enjoy the heat of the kitchen. You enjoy the various things that you have to do while cooking, okay? And so that by itself drives you to want to cook more because you enjoy the process of doing all those things. The confusing thing a lot of the times is that one behavior can serve a lot of different functions depending on the circumstances that you're talking about. Take a behavior like hitting, okay? Let's say that um, uh, you get on the, the phone and start talking and your child wants your attention, okay? But you're too busy on the phone, so they go over and hit you, okay? If they hit you and you get off the phone, guess what? You, you gave them attention and they're going to do the hitting again, okay? So in that instance, the hitting, the function of hitting is to get your attention. And if you stop talking on the phone and you address them, like, what? What do you want? Okay, just doing that fulfills the function of that behavior, which is to get your attention. Let's say we're at a park and it's like, okay, Time to go. It's a, you know, you've had, you've played long enough on the playground. It's time for us to go. You don't want to leave. And so, wow, you hit, you hit me. Okay. Now, if I then allow you extra time to play on the playground, okay, and you didn't have to leave at that time, well, the hitting fulfilled the function of the hit, which is to escape from leaving the area. Say I have had a long day at work uh, and I really look forward to like, oh, getting some ice cream. So I go and get myself some ice cream and my son comes over and he wants an ice cream, but there's only one scoop left. I haven't been looking forward to this ice cream all day, you know? And what if he hits me because I'm not giving it to him, right? If he hits me because he wants the ice cream and I like, oh, fine, here, you can have the ice cream. Well, guess what happened? Right? The function of his behavior got met. He wanted something and he got it by what he did. Last example has to do with sensory stimulation. Okay, And this is a weird one because it's about the sensations that the child derives from it. You know, So if the child hits, but they enjoy the feeling of hitting something, they enjoy the sound that it makes, they enjoy the sensations that they get as a byproduct of the hitting, well, it reinforces itself because I enjoy it, so I'm going to do it more. The more I do it, the more I enjoy it. All the examples I used before, the one behavior of hitting serves different purposes based on different circumstances. And that's what makes it a little bit more challenging for people to understand. It's like, oh, this one behavior has this function in this circumstance, but has a completely different function in a different circumstance. There are times when we derive a multiplicity of um, reinforcement for one behavior, meaning like, oh, if I cook really well, maybe I get the attention. Maybe I get uh, access to something. Maybe I get, 
there, there might be a multiplicity, but most of the time when you have one behavior, there's a primary function for that behavior. There's a main reason that that behavior is occurring. Now that we've kind of talked about the functions of behavior, those are really important because if you don't identify the function of the behavior, most likely you're inadvertently reinforcing it or inadvertently not reinforcing the right behaviors. So behaviors are most likely going to increase when the function of the behavior is met. So if I do something for that particular function and the function is met, I'm more likely to engage in that behavior again. So we talked about how when we have functions, behavior, and they're met, how that results in reinforcement, okay? Meaning like, oh, the behavior is likely to reoccur, reoccur. And again, when we talk about reinforcement, it's a backwards looking process most of the time because we want to know like, oh, did the behavior actually improve? Did it actually increase in frequency? And that's how we know it's reinforcement.